So, hi, I'm uh, Matt, and I am for the negative of uh, expanding community policing. Um, I put expand in air quotes because the affirmative hasn't yet stated what that's going to look like. They're just saying expand community policing. Um, does that mean more police officers? Does that mean more police officers assigned to specific areas with higher crime rates? What does that look like? Uh, what kind of community policing does that look like? That's something that they don't address and that I can't really argue because they didn't really state. Um, uh, they proceeded to talk about how uh, community policing is a deterrent uh, instead of a response to a situation um, and that uh, cops being on foot like that and seeing, in the, seeing them in the communities definitely decreases crime rates. Uh, yet the affirmative does not cite any, end of any evidence specifically that it does decrease crime rates. Um, I, they didn't state any evidence that adding any more uh, police in this specific sector would actually decrease any kind of crime rates. Um, they did talk about the counties being very big uh, for a lot of police to cover. And uh, that's very true, not just in terms of square mileage, but in people. Um, as, Los An as according to um, a, uh, officers per capita rates for various U.S. cities, in L.A. we only have 24.6 employees per 10,000 people. This means that we do not have a lot of manpower. Therefore, we have to dedicate uh, the amount of cops we currently have to their systems and the amount of cops that we currently have in community policing systems to stay there. We can't really, we don't have a whole bunch of extra cops that we can just go throwing around being like, oh, well, you're working in community policing now. This is going to be better because it's going to help out in the community more. We need our officers that are in stationed right now to do the jobs they're currently doing, uh, which is also one of my other points is that community, we already have community policing. They say that we need more community policing. And there's a famous phrase, a bunch of people have said it, so we don't really know where it originated from, but I believe uh, insanity is primarily defined by doing the same thing over and over again without expecting different results. The affirmative hasn't stated that community policing helps reduce crime rates, um, and so while they said that, they haven't stated any information. So we don't have any concrete proof that it does decrease crime rates. So the current community policing systems, we don't know for sure if they're decreasing crime rates yet we want to add more community policing and spend even more money to add more community police as a solution that we don't even know if it works yet. Sure. Okay. Uh, and so we talk about the manpower and the money. So uh, just as a, as a quick look at it, I was able to find the budget uh, from the U.S. Department of Justice talking about their 2017 budget, which was established uh, in February of this year. Uh, and the, they have a specific sector for their community policing policies uh, for, the whole, for the whole nation. Um, and in total, they requested $286 million uh, just for these community policing strategies. I don't know if you've ever been to Compton or to Englewood, but in those areas, we don't necessarily have a ton of money to be spending about two million of taxpayer dollars on something that we don't even know works according to the affirmative. Um, even uh, former Vice President uh, Joe Biden states, it's really expensive, it takes a lot of cops. Um, and his 1994 crime bill at the time was a pretty expensive operation. It put uh, 100,000 cops on the street and it cost one billion dollars. If we break down that fiscal year, it starts to talk about how we only have 20 million, or how they requested 20 million specifically for the community policing development as a set aside within the funding, and $229 million for the COPS hiring program just to hire new COPS. This is going to fund 188 positions uh, in the police force, and I don't know about you, but spending 289, I believe, 286 uh, million dollars to fund 188 positions doesn't necessarily sound like it's going to solve our understaffed issues in the uh, area of 
LA because remember this is the entire nation's budget not California's budget so we're hiring 188 positions in 50 states if we just say 188 is more around 200 and we have 50 states then that's not a lot of cops per state Uh, if they talk about the uh, lack of diversity, we are also spending five million already in diversity as a set aside within these fundings. They're also saying that it reduces crime rates, but the, the thing is is that we're spending so much money as crime rates are already decreasing, we can't afford to spend any more money. Uh, according to uh, the Justice Policy Institute, um, an article called Release United States Continuing to Overspend on Police, um, Crime rates across the states are decreasing without every state implementing community policing strategies. Um, crime rates are at their lowest in the past 30 years, and the U.S. continues to maintain uh, large and increasingly militarized police units, spending more than $100 billion every year, according to a report released today by the Justice Policy Institute. Something they also stated is the um, community policing is in decline, yet again, the affirmative didn't really cite any evidence in their debate. I don't know if they forgot to or if they actually don't have any evidence, but uh, we can't really determine what that actually looks like without them actually citing some sources. Um, and I don't see why they're saying community policing is on the decrease if in total we already have community policing strategies, which they claim to work so well. So uh, that is why I want you to vote neg on whatever policy they're trying to put out here. Thank you.